I want to talk about uh, the Theopolis Institute, which I, uh, am, of which I am president. It's not in Birmingham. It's in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it's an extra syllable, and the emphasis is elsewhere. Uh, the accent is different. Um, we're in Birmingham, Alabama, uh, and uh, we started about two and a half years ago. Uh, the Theopolis Institute is partly a think tank. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm work there, and uh, the Theopolis Institute, and the, the Theopolis Institute donor supports my research in writing and speaking. Uh, as along with my colleague James Jordan, uh, who is uh, a mainly a biblical liturgical theologian, we started the Theopolis Institute in order to train pastors and other church leaders, uh, and particularly in areas that we thought were. Uh, either neglected or somewhat weak in the thank you in the ecclesiastical world that we're in, which is the Reformed Protestant world. Uh, the um, area that we think is uh, ha has been very weak in his historically in Reformed Protestant circles is the area of liturgical and sacramental theology. Uh, that's uh, if you're in an Anglican tradition, then uh, training in liturgy is an essential part of your training as a, a priest or pastor in the church. If you're in a Lutheran setting, that's true. In a Reformed setting, that just hasn't been a, uh, hasn't been an emphasis. And what what training you get in worship is um, practical theology and not um, not a real uh, deep and thorough understanding of the, the, the theology of the liturgy and the, the biblical grounds for it. So that's an area that we're teaching in. Uh, another area that seems like it's uh, it's not a neglected area. Is biblical studies that's not that's not neglected in any evangelical reform seminary. They get a lot of teaching on the Bible, um, but we think that we have something particular to contribute there as well, um, because even though the Bible gets uh, taught in all evangelical reform seminaries, it's often taught with um, with a lot of emphasis on understanding the scholarship of the Bible, a lot of emphasis on trying to. Uh, develop tools for doing Bible, uh, uh, biblical research and biblical study. Uh, there's less emphasis on the uh, exposure to and grappling with the text itself. Um, my colleague James Jordan, James Jordan is given to hyperbole, and one of his common uh, outbursts of hyperbole is that you get everything in seminary except the Bible. Okay. Those of you who've been to seminary can assess whether that's an accurate Description. I think there's there's definitely something to that. that you get training in how to use the Bible, how to use the tools to study the Bible, but actual exposure to the biblical text and um, is uh, is not as much as it could be. That's one area we think uh, we we want our programs and our our courses to uh, actually deal with the biblical text as it's given to us, as the Lord has delivered it to us. The other thing that we think is uh, needs to be uh, the other contribution that we hope to make within our particular area of uh, the church is to um, renew our way, uh, renew our understanding of how we should read the Bible. Um, put this under the heading of typology, uh, biblical theology, different ways to describe what we're trying to do. Um, uh, it, you can put it under the heading of trying to revive some of the pre-modern patristic and medieval ways of reading the Bible. I'd defend it as a New Testament way of reading the Bible. Um, the, when Paul reads the Old Testament, when uh, the gospel writers look at the Old Testament, cite the Old Testament, they're seeing the entire Old Testament as a, a prelude to Jesus Christ. They're reading the entire Old Testament through the lens of the gospel, uh, and um, the whole Bible is Christian scripture for us. It's not just that you have the New Testament with the history of Israel in the background, but the whole Bible is God's, uh, is, is uh, about the Christ who had to suffer and then enter into his glory. So uh, that's that's a, when we when we're teaching courses on um, on biblical subjects, we're trying to teach the courses from that kind of perspective, a, a more um, what we think of as a what we think is a, a richer, more biblical way of reading the scriptures, not uh, confining ourselves uh, tightly or narrowly to grammatical and historical Jesus, but trying to understand it uh, the entire scripture as a communication about Christ. Another thing that we uh, we think is lack, has been lacking in pastoral training is some understanding of culture, um, some uh, 
understanding of not only of how to understand the scriptures and expound them, but some understanding of how to exegete the culture into which you're expounding them. Uh, what's uh, a culture in that sense, uh, the way of life of contemporary people and how you make the Bible and the gospel understandable and meaningful and powerful in that setting, that's part of what we're aiming to do. But then also just uh, some grasp of the great tradition of Christian civilization. Um, the gospel has uh, had a, a deep and dramatic impact on uh, uh, every sector of Western civilization, on its literature, on its uh, painting and sculpture, on its architecture, on its politics, on its legal structures. Um, all of those have been dramatically affected by uh, Christianity, by the gospel, by scripture. And so we want to, as part of our uh, training, we want to uh, make sure that our students have some, at least some introduction to uh, those, uh, those cultural features of, uh, of, uh, of, Christian, of Christianity, those cultural effects of Christianity. So our, our tagline is Bible, Liturgy, Culture. The Theophilus Institute, Bible, Liturgy, and Culture are the focal points. We've been, we've been uh, so far we've been uh, uh, dealing with those topics through a series of uh, annual cycle of uh, uh, small week-long courses. Students come to Birmingham for a week. Um, we begin every day with morning prayer. We have noon prayers. We have afternoon prayers. So the day is liturgically structured. Uh, in between, we have lectures and seminars. We eat meals together. Uh, we spend evenings together uh, uh, discussing, informally discussing what we've been talking about in the course. So for a week, our, the students come to Birmingham and they have this intensive experience of worship and study. And um, some of the students are taking those courses for credit toward a certificate. They have assignments, reading assignments and writing assignments that surround that week-long course. Uh, we've offered courses on biblical topics. Uh, we've had a Book of Genesis course, an Exodus course, a Revelation course. Uh, we've had uh, liturgical theology. Um, I'm going to be co-teaching a course on sacramental theology in May, so we're covering that liturgical side. We're also doing courses, as I said, on uh, culture and culture, kind of culture mission kinds of things. Uh, we did a course last spring on music, um, both um, music within the church and also the uh, kind of uh, sociology and theology of music about how we should think about music and not just its effects and not just how we use it in worship, but also its effects in, uh, in the world and uh, how we should try to assess the trends and directions of contemporary music. So uh, those are the kinds of courses we've been, uh, and we've had some courses on mission. We had a course on uh, city missions, urban missions in uh, August of last year. Those are the th kinds of things we've been offering so far. The, the uh, brochure I was holding up a second ago, I just have a couple of these with me, uh, but this describes the uh, main program that we're offering at the Institute and it's we're starting it in the fall of this year August we'll be launching this program uh, which will involve a full year of Bible liturgy and culture um, we'll be taking students through the entire Bible through the year um, we'll be uh, we'll be studying liturgy in conjunction with those biblical studies so we'll be looking at the Pentateuch studying the Pentateuch and the biblical thread of the program Meanwhile, we'll be looking at the passages in the Pentateuch that are relevant to liturgical theology at the same time. So we're trying to root our liturgical theology in scripture. And at the same time, we'll be dealing with some cultural topics that are related to the issues that come up in the Pentateuch. So uh, creation and culture, uh, God and culture, Trinity and culture will be under that heading. Uh, if you're interested in this program, if you know somebody that might be interested in coming uh, for a year, spending a year with us, uh, please feel free to take that and hand it off, or you can direct people to our, our website, theopolisinstitute.com, and uh, the same, <coughs> lay, the, the program is laid out there just pretty much as it is here in the brochure. Um, so uh, that's, that's what the Theopolis Institute is and does. Um, I, should, I should say this to the, uh, who's, who is this for? Good question. We'll find that out as we open up the application process and start getting students, then we'll find out who we're for. Um, there, is, there is some of that uh, 
um, and you, you, you find your audience as you open something like this up. <clears throat> uh, what we've had so far in our intensive week-long courses are pastors who are looking for uh, a break from pastoral responsibility, responsibility for a week, a time for uh, thought and reflection and theological discussion. It's not a week off they find very soon after they get there. <laughs> but it's a different sort of busyness, and uh, we've had pastors coming pretty regularly and they find it a very refreshing uh, time for them. Uh, we have aspiring pastors who, this is kind of a niche that we're falling into without really having uh, anticipated. Um, seminary education is exceedingly expensive in the United States. Uh, many seminaries uh, are in uh, some, some degree of financial trouble uh, since the uh, financial collapse of 2008. Uh, students have a hard time uh, 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 paying for seminary, but it pays off because, of course, once you've paid for seminary, then you get into these high-paying pastoral jobs, and you can pay off your school debt very readily. That's how it works in the States, because pastors are wealthy. And, uh, that's not how it works. Uh, unlike other, uh, other professional schools, you where you can uh, go into mountains and mountains of debt as a trainee for medicine or law, and they, you're making lots of money and you can pay it off. Uh, you can't do that very often with pastoral training. So we're, uh, a lot of the young aspiring pastors that we've encountered are uh, taking a course here and there at a seminary, taking online courses, trying to learn the languages on their own or through some online kind of program and can't really, they've got a couple of kids, uh, they can't really take three, year, three or four years off and go to seminary, they don't have any sources for funds. They don't want to take debt because then they're going to be in a, a low paying pastoral position which won't allow them to pay off the debt. So uh, we're, uh, we're, we're gathering, we're uh, appealing to students who are in that kind of category who are looking for something that actually is face to face training. I think I'm not uh, against online theological training. I think you can do a lot of things through online theological training, especially with all of the kind of interfaces that you have these days. But there's no substitute for actually spending time with your teachers. There's no substitute for spending time with your teachers, especially because um, the liturgical aspect of the life of our, of our work, uh, the life of our school is an essential component of that training. You can't get that. I guess you could set up a whole series of Skype screens and do morning prayer uh, uh, over Skype. I suppose that's possible. Uh, not ideal though. So we're, uh, so far the intensive course has appealed to students who are intending to be pastors at some point, want to be church leaders at some point, and just can't afford to go through the normal seminary route. And I'm expecting that a fair number of the students we end up with at the year-long program will be of that sort. So, uh, you know, if a pastor has a year of sabbatical, wants to refresh his uh, his understanding of scripture, uh, wants to learn more about liturgy than it would be a course for them. Somebody who's aspiring to pastoral leadership or leadership in the church in the future, it'd be a good component of a of pastoral training. It's not the whole of pastoral training, but it's a significant component of it. We're also hoping to attract students who are interested and in, called to other sorts of uh, work, other sorts of professions, but want to do it with a theological understanding. They want to they want to go into medicine or law or business or journalism or whatever, uh, but they want to go into it having some rich understanding of scripture and how scripture might apply to the work that they're going to do. So we're uh, hoping to attract students like that who are not aiming to be pastors in the future. Um, so if you know anybody like that who's interested in a, a uh, or if you yourself are interested in such a program, uh, please pick up uh, that uh, the brochure, look on our website. If you need more information, there is an information, uh, uh, there's an information email to click uh, on the website and you can uh, ask questions.